I'm Chris Ardito of the Connecticut Crease. Today we're going to go over how to follow the player behind the net. Goalies mess up behind the net a lot and they lose the play and give up easy goals on wraparounds. The reason I like this drill is because it helps the goalie limit the player's options behind the net and follow the play and not lose the puck. You want to start with the coach above the goal line and the goalie square to them with their toes facing the shooter. As the player gets behind the net, his heels go both to the goal line, his stick is ready to block the pass out, and his glove is blocking in a hole by his knee so I can't bake the puck in. As the player gets a little bit further, Alex pulls off, leaving his foot on the post and stick ready for that pass out still, and looks low through the net at the puck. As the player gets a little bit further, Alex turns, leads with his hands, and keeps his eyes on the puck. And then when the player gets over, one quick shuffle, hands ready, stick ready for the pass out, glove in front. As the player gets above the goal line, just like the other side, squares up to the play. Couple key points. As the shooter's above the goal line, you want to be square. This way they can't take the far side and shoot the puck right over and in. If the player's above the goal line and you stay flat, I have the far side to shoot at and score, or again, I can go off his leg and in. Now when the player's behind the net, you want to bring this blocker leg back. This way the player behind can't take a shot and bank it off it. If Alex has his leg forward, the player can shoot the puck from here, off his knee, and in. So above the goal line, the goalie's square to the play, and behind the goal line, goalie's legs go back, hands come around and ready to block the pass out. We want to stay on the post until the last possible second. This way we limit how many options the forward has. A player has six options from behind the net. They can jam at either side, they can pass out either side, or they can walk out either side. If Alex leaves the post early and goes to the middle, now he can still see the puck, but now he's opened up the fact that I can wrap it around now. I can pass the puck out to a player up here and he can't block it with his stick, or I can walk up and he's not ready. If Alex gets stuck in the middle and loses the puck and he starts looking around rapidly, now I have three options to both sides and he's lost and can't recover well. If he holds the post, now if I jam it, I'm going to hit him in the skate. If I walk up, he's going to square up to me and play it strong. If I go to pass it out in front, Alex blocks the puck. By holding this post to the last possible moment, you take away one entire side and force the shooter to go far side on you. Now remember, you don't want to slide post to post unless you're incredibly late getting across. The reason is, the net is about six feet across. It's a straight line, which is your shortest path. The player's going in a circle, which is about three times as far as you have to go. So if you stay on your feet and shuffle, as long as you do the proper steps at the right times, you'll be able to make it across before the shooter can, no matter how fast they're skating. Now if you lose the puck while the player's behind the net, a good tip is to find the forward's blade. If you can find their stick blade, there's a good chance that's where the puck is, and you'll be able to find it quickly. So find their hands, find their stick, and you should be able to find the puck too. 